Now we're gonna talk about how to actually help the microbiome. And there are five R's that we can use to help you remember to help the microbiome. So the first R is remove, where you wanna remove the bad bacteria, the irritants, the food toxicities that are triggering you. So um, removing and finding what is irritating is very important. For some people, it could be gluten, it can be dairy, it can be soy, corn, sugar, but um, other people, it could be almonds, peanuts, you know, so you have to find the foods that trigger you and remove them from your diet. Otherwise, there are also pesticides that you might be eating, and so you have to make sure you try to eat as organic as you can, because these toxins can really cause more of your gut to become leaky and allow even more toxins in. And you don't want any of those unwanted microbes, so you have to make sure you wash your vegetables and your fruits very well. Um, you can uh, soak them in baking soda and vinegar uh, ahead of time and that before um, consuming the fruits and the vegetables, just to, just to be sure. And so that's the first R, remove. And the second R is to replace what is lacking. Now, this, this is not just a general everyone take this approach. Again, it depends on uh, the state of your microbiome and, and what you really are lacking. So if you're not lacking it, then you don't want to replace it. But some examples are digestive enzymes, you know, bile. And if you have low acid, then you want to replace with hydrochloric acid. That's the second R is to replace. Mm -hmm. So you want to uh, also re-inoculate with beneficial bacteria, such as probiotics, uh, fermented foods like uh, yogurt uh, and uh, uh, fermented uh, uh, compounds, okay? Uh, in, the, in the Asian uh, civilization, uh, like the Korean culture, they use uh, kimchi, but every civilization has some kind of fermented food, sauerkraut, for example. You can also have prebiotics that you can take to help the body uh, to promote probiotic function. But the key to understand is that this re-inoculation or reintroducing of the microbiome has to be done very carefully. Because if the body is fragile or weak or already compromised, you don't want to re-inoculate too much. More is not actually better. Because if your body takes, has too much, then it can overwhelm the rest of the system and cause an imbalance. Remember, the body's balance has to be maintained all the time. It's not one or the other too much. So sometimes we have a lot of people that come and, and there are many, many billions of uh, probiotics. And actually, they can get constipated, for example, if you have uh, too much uh, probiotics on board. So the right amount and the right timing, the right frequency and the right rotation become very, very important. The weaker you are, uh, the more risk uh, is on the table. Okay? All right? And the fourth R is repair, where you want to repair the gut lining after it's been bombarded with a lot of toxins, right? So what are some ways of repairing and getting that lining up and going again? There are some supplements that you could use or even natural compounds like collagen, which can be in bone broth. That's why we really love having people take some bone broth. Colostrum which is um, the first you know, milk that comes out of um, cows or mothers. Uh, but colostrum in itself is full of these IgA antibodies and they are really good for helping to cope, but also to help your immune system and your gut. Uh, glutamine, for example, I'm sorry to, to cut in. I have to address this because uh, glutamine is very unique. It's an amino acid and it is actually called the intestinal permeability factor. And uh, you know, if you combine it with other uh, compounds uh, such as pantothene as well as DHEA in the right dosage, it can be fantastic in healing and stabilizing the gut. However, uh, glutamine is also quite, can be stimulating, I would not say quite, but can be stimulating if the body is weak. So these items, collagen, for example, uh, can be constipational, okay? Uh, so uh, with this in mind, uh, you have to pay attention, okay? Aloe vera is another one, and of course, uh, licorice. But I'm not a big fan of licorice because it has other issues, okay? Especially uh, in the genome petite people, okay? Right, 
And it's so important to repair the gut lining because if you continue have to, to have the leaky gut, you're gonna continue to have toxins come through and your small intestine actually has lots of immune cells called pyrus patches that would be able to create antibodies to these toxins and therefore go and attack other areas of your body. So you definitely want to make sure you repair your gut lining to make sure that these toxins are not coming through and you're not making antibodies to them. So the fifth R is to retain a healthy environment. To do that, you need to retain a healthy balance between the microbiome once it's been restored. Remember all the time, it's balance, it's balance, it's balance, okay? It's not this way or this way. It has both ways are no good, okay? So proper vitamin supplementation, proper healthy diet, uh, proper mineral intakes, but not too much are all important factors. Minerals are especially important uh, because minerals uh, act as catalysts to help many enzymatic reactions. However, if you're over-mineralized, as uh, what happened to a lot of the adrenal fatigue uh, people who does not realize there's a downside to that, it, they can be overstimulated because especially mineral water or mineralized salt uh, can be problematic if uh, one takes it over time. It gives you a little bit more energy in the beginning, but it can be this regulation uh, for the gut, okay? So just to recap what the five R's are, the first was to remove, to so remove bad bacteria and irritants. The second was to replace what you're lacking. The third was to re-inoculate with beneficial bacteria. The fourth was to repair the gut lining. And the fifth was to retain a healthy environment. So that's the five R program to help your microbiome.